Hello and welcome to Larry Has Opinions. Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. What a ride. <laughs> if you have not heard of this book before, this is translated from the Japanese and it's all set in Japan as well. And we follow this young girl who's having a bit of a difficult time dealing with her own family and her school and teachers and the reality around her to the point that she sort of convinces herself that she's an alien herself and she doesn't quite belong <laughs> in this planet. She then grows up and we also follow her life as an adult after a time jump. I picked this one up because I had read Convenience Store Woman last year by the same author and I very much enjoyed it. And that deals with very similar themes about this Japanese woman not quite fitting into modern society. And the same theme is very much prevalent on this book, again, where this young girl first and woman uh, later doesn't quite find herself in society. She doesn't actually want to be part of society. I was under the impression that this had some magical element or sci-fi uh, part to the story, but despite the premise and despite the cover, that's not quite the case. I would just say this is a straight literary fiction and any element that sounds a bit off or a bit odd tend to be just in the minds of the characters really rather than this being objectively a magical realism story or, or anything like that. Despite the cute cover and despite how accessible this book feels both in terms of not being a very long book but also having a prose that is very basic, very straightforward, it can be a very challenging read. The author really does not hold back whenever she gets the opportunity to get into a very deep and very dark place. She definitely goes full on, <laughs> she jumps straight into it. And um, I quite enjoyed it because of that, but this definitely might not be for everyone. There are definitely several scenes where it, they're really tough to read because of the circumstances described that are very intense and very brutal and other parts of the story where the events that have been described are really revolting i think that's the right word so it, it can be a pretty challenging one to get through despite appearances natsuki this young girl is the main character and we're really in her head for the whole of the book. So we get to experience all of these events that happen to her, not just in a more objective manner, but really in a very vivid and effective manner from her own perspective, just seeing how she sees all of these events unfolding in front of her eyes. There are a couple of relatively prominent uh, characters as well. Um, and everyone else is a bit on the margin. Um, we see a lot of her um, family relations and friends, but they tend to be a bit more devices for the points that the author is trying to explore. I would say the three main characters are the ones that are a bit more fleshed out in terms of the narrative. There's something very universal about this story because the theme of not wanting to be part of mainstream society and taking this outsider perspective onto society is something that can definitely resonate with readers from all parts of life or all, from all countries, all cultures. And it's definitely something that is part of the human or can be part of the human experience. And this is taken to a more, a much more extreme place from where convenience store woman, for instance, um, was, which was a, a very a much more conventional sort of story compared to this one, I have to say. But there's also something distinctly Japanese about the story because a lot of the cultural references and a lot of the phenomena that are uh, described in the book also feel very Japanese. In particular, when it comes to the dynamics of the group and group identity and group reputation overriding individual identities, which is obviously something that is common to a lot of different cultures, but in the West, we also have a lot of a much more individualistic perspective on things, which is quite different, for instance, from, from the Japanese uh, sort of uh, cultural setup. And that is very much reflected in this book. And I found it an extremely uh, compelling look at that specific phenomena. 
And also we see things like extreme withdrawal from society, which again, is something that happens everywhere, but specifically in Japan is a phenomenon that has taken much more significant proportions compared to the rest of the world. The author is definitely not afraid, as I mentioned, to take the story to very dark, very twisted places. And um, I'm not going to mention any content warnings or anything like that, because they would definitely be spoiling the book. But if you know you can be sensitive to different sorts of content, this is definitely one where you want to check be before you start reading it. That said, I think the impact of it always feels very true, even though the story itself is very allegor allegorical and very far-fetched. The, the exploration of these episodes, to me, always felt very compelling and not shocking for just the shock value, which is something that I think authors can very easily fall into when they describe episodes that are a bit gruesome or a bit um, problematic. So I think the author here really pulls it off, in my opinion, even though this, as I mentioned, might not be everybody's cup of tea. So Murata once again takes this hard look at society and the sort of expectations and pressure that are put onto individuals when it comes to their careers and the expectation that people should progress in their work lives. Uh, and this very much applies to both men and women in, in the book, in the story as well, and to family lives and the pressure to get married and get settled and have babies and all of that. And uh, for instance, the, the main character, um, when, she, when she's a young girl, she just refers to the village and the environment around her as the factory because she just sees this environment as something that is purely dedicated to the production of more babies. So it's a, like a baby factory. <laughs> and um, it's quite compelling the way she takes this outside of view, um, just essentially taking a fresh look at human society as an outsider. And that's where the concept of seeing herself as an alien comes from. And I, I thought that was very effectively executed. I also found the exploration of trauma very compelling and the types of mechanisms that people build around them to cope with very traumatic events and episodes that might happen to them. And the author really challenges us to take a fresh look at human society and try and draw the line between being a sociopath and being a good citizen and what those and where that line should be drawn and how it might not always be as straightforward as you would typically assume just from living your day-to-day -day life. My final thoughts on this is that I really, really enjoyed, if enjoying is the right word, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> you definitely should have a strong stomach to get through some of the episodes that are described in the book. But if you're prepared for that and you're, you're in the right mindset, it's a an incredibly effective exploration of, of these themes, and I would definitely recommend the book. So for these reasons, my rating for this is 9 out of 10. I hope you guys liked this video. Please give me a thumbs up. If you've read it or if you want to read it, please leave me a comment, let me know. Join our Discord, the link is in the description box, and I'll see you the next time.